Hey everyone, Elite here with the last video for this week in my daily series of painting a page every day with a different color from my palette. It is July 31st and we did it! World Watercolor Month has come to an end. I will do my best to continue this series. I believe next week it'll probably be on as usual and then both of my kids are going to be home, so I don't know what's going to happen after that. <laughs> Maybe I can pull an Aliona and uh, try and record two videos every day next week, and then I can... Um, two or three videos and then maybe I can have enough videos for most of August. We'll see. Uh, today's color is Cobalt Turquoise and I'm using this beautiful pencil from Holbein. This color is called Ice Green. It's one of my favorite. Uh, I got the small set of pastel Holbein pencils years ago uh, sent to me from Japan and uh, I really love the colors. They're lovely. So I'm going back to basics. Well, not back to basics, but back to where I've kind of been in my art journey, artwork in the last months. And so I'm not surprised that this page is one of my favorites. I'm starting the composition here or my florals. I'm going to do this kind of arch composition that I love with probably five blooms, I think. So I'm mixing cobalt turquoise with some buff titanium. And that is giving me a very, very muted kind of a minty green, which I think is beautiful. And I'm just slowly building my uh, blooms here and trying to, you can see I have my wash there in my palette and I try to kind of tint every color with that mixture. So there's not a lot of um, paint being used in its pure saturated form. And I really have learned that, first of all, I like the result, but also it helps the bright colors pop. Uh, I'm not always a huge fan of neutrals, but I am a huge fan of semi-neutrals. And, um, and so you can see that I'm always kind of toning down a little bit my colors and, and trying to keep the very, very saturated colors to a smaller portion of my painting. Uh, the color I'm using here, I just squeezed a little bit uh, on my palette. I think it's a Lizarin Crimson, I want to say. And it's, you know, super popular color that has been in artists' palettes for years and years and years. And I never really fell in love with it, but this one, I'm not even sure which brand it is. I, I really don't remember, but uh, I think it, it is a beautiful color. So we'll see, maybe for my autumn palette, I will take out all of the other pinks and reds and oranges in my palette and see what I can do with them. Now, the cobalt turquoise that I'm using here is actually called cobalt turquoise green, I want to say. And here I have in this current palette, I have the Sennelier version, but Daniel Smith has a beautiful version. Schminke has a beautiful version. You just have to check the names because sometimes it's called turquoise green. Sometimes it's turquoise. Some brands call cobalt teal the cobalt turquoise. So just make sure. Um, also, this is a very, very similar, if not identical, dupe for the Daniel Smith um, Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine, which is a gorgeous color, but uh, first of all, it's very expensive, and secondly, it's not light fast, and I have seen samples of people wear that turquoise uh, really grayed, like turned gray in time, and... I'm happy to use colors that are not light fast, something like opera pink. I'm okay with it if it fades over time. I know it'll fade to just like a, a, mute, a more muted pink and not such an intense one, but I wouldn't want it to fade into a different color. So for me personally, I will not be purchasing uh, Sleeping Beauty, uh, even though I love the shade of it. But also Daniel Smith, you can see in their dot cards, the color right above Sleeping Beauty is Cobalt Turquoise and it is almost identical 
in my opinion. It's also a granulating color from all of the brands if they're using the cobalt uh, pigments. And it's just a really, really beautiful, slightly more muted uh, turquoise compared to cobalt teal. I love them both. I use them both a lot. And I especially love them in mixtures. I love mixing them with the lighter neutrals in my palette, buff titanium, Naples yellow, uh, white, and also mixing them with their complementary colors, something like uh, a coral color or an orangey red or my bright red in my palette. So I really enjoy using them. And then if you mix them with the pinks, you'll get very, very muted uh, purples. Okay, so what I'm hoping to do for the weekend is to show you some of the stuff I bought and maybe swatch some of the new Daniel Smith tubes that I got in the art store in Vienna that I went to on Wednesday. And um, I also want to do a favorites video. I'll try to do that for you. So lots of stuff going on and I also want to do a video about my prettiest art supplies because <laughs> pretty art supplies make me happy. Uh, as for the painting, I think you can just see how it comes together. For me, the important thing is to get really interesting color mixes that I love. And I have to say one of the things I love about my palette here is that I have that large mixing section and that means I can really you can see I have this gradient of color I can keep adding colors I have here in the mixing area probably like five different mixtures I can tweak them and move them around I couldn't do that if I had one of those mixing um, dishes or or mixing areas that have separate like separate sections for each mixture. I really, really prefer to have this one area. I've learned that from using this palette. My studio palette that's made of porcelain also has two uh, very large mixing areas. So it also works well for my current way of painting and mixing colors. But then other palettes might have, might have like several uh, mixing areas and that is not yeah, that's not going to work for me because I'm all about creating really interesting um, semi-neutrals and mixes from all the colors that I pick. So yeah, this, this palette is serving me very, very well. I know many of you also got it and you're enjoying it. It makes me really, really happy. I'm so happy I found it. And what I've learned, I've also, I took it with me to Vienna where I met a friend and we kind of painted together. I learned that, you know, I'm always searching for that perfect palette to take with me on the go or wherever. And yes, this one is a big one. It's definitely not compact, but I'm so used to it and I'm so comfortable with it that it's just... It, it serves me so well. And my point is not that you should get this particular palette. My point is if you keep using something that you enjoy, I mean, you'll just get so comfortable with it that it will keep working for you and uh, hopefully will also just make you paint more. I just, you know, I grabbed this palette and I painted at my friend's house. I had this, I had the new paints that I got, some brushes that I'm excited to show you beautiful beautiful new brushes that I got and um, yeah and that's kind of all I needed and I didn't have to think about which colors to take which palette to take I just grabbed this and um, went on my way it holds the if you <laughs> probably the middle row in the the section with the half pans uh, I probably need to add um, like magnetic tape or something so I know that they stay uh, that they will stay in place but everything else you know stays really well in this palette it you can travel with it again it's not the lightest or most compact but you can see it holds a ton of color and it's just um yeah it's a workhorse uh the surface like all plastic is getting stained my mixing area i can see it already has uh kind of a purplish tint probably from my schminke brilliant red violet but uh, it is what it is and I'm okay with that I don't really mind 
So the other color that I added to this painting is the zoazite. That's the color I, I just touched now, which is incredible. You can see it's this muted, earthy, dark green that granulates beautifully. And I'm thinking for me, probably this would replace perlene green. I do love perlene green. I think it's a great, uh, more neutral dark to use in florals, but the zoazite has that granulation. And so, yeah, I might just um, leave out perlene green for the autumn palette. I don't know. I'm excited to see where that takes me, but I think I'll probably uh, switch to the autumn palette in September. So we still have time. We still have all of August. Uh, now I'm using the final touches. I'm going in with some pencil and just adding a little bit more yellow. This is a really easy way of adding color. Nothing will get smeared. The yellow will not get muddy because it's a dry pencil. And that is it. I love how this turned out. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.